Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to the Thaumaturge. And in the last episode, guys, Victor headed to the cemetery to pay respects to his father, and we got to see firsthand the anti-Thaumaturge movement going throughout the city of Warsaw. There were some folks at the gate who recognized Victor as a Thaumaturge and attacked him on sight, almost. If there was a vacancy here in the cemetery, Victor at least filled one of those spots by shooting their leader, and uh, we were able to make it to the family mausoleum where some very awkward goodbyes were had. But now it's time to head to the family residence. Let's go ahead and read some of these, maybe testimonials. Oh. Okay, other members of the family. Nikodem. And of course it's raining. I mean, it's appropriate. Let's see if anything... I don't think there would be, like, new tombstones or anything to read. Oh, man, what a dedicated graveyard keeper. It's a living. We can go. The hardest thing was getting the rid of the urn. The scattering oh. I could handle. You can play the clown, but I know how much this has cost you. I'm glad you went. Love at a funeral? Eros postmortem? Is it suitable for a young lady in mourning to fraternize with bachelors? Constancia Shabowska, the Warsaw Courier. Could I ask for a brief comment? Faina. Thank you. And you, sir? Um... We're twins, my dear lady. The Shulskis reunited. You don't look like a horrid cripple. Why did you leave Warsaw so quickly? Don't tell her anything. She'll write whatever she wants anyway. And we'd better get going. But we did want to clarify. I can sort it out, but it might cause you some trouble. It's not worth getting your hands dirty over. Get out of here, or I might decide you're attacking an Imperial official, and you'll wake up tomorrow in the Citadel. Are you threatening me, Judge? I'm actually spurring you from him. Would you rather try your luck with a Taumaturg? Come on, children. I'm sure my Pietia is already waiting for us at home. I'd love to see my cousin. Are you coming with us? Uh, yeah, I mean, how many times does he get to see his sister? Thanks. Get in. I'm sure the lawyer is already waiting for us. I grew up here. I ran through all these streets. I... I like the uncle. <laughs> He's got Gimli energy, if that makes any sense. Um, let's take a look at our surroundings. Okay, another part of the city. The northern uh, district. Locked, locked, locked. Hmm. And locked. We're going to run through the rainy streets here, though, just to see if there's anything for us to read. Whether to kind of suit Victor's mood. thing about it is, with a reporter, you have to be careful sometimes, because you can make it worse by getting super combative. And the fact that we asked our sister, hey, I can deal with this, but she seemed to be grateful for it. Ticket to the circus. Um, street at the corner of 2 Ulkanik. Entry ticket for the show on September at 4 p.m. Can we go to the circus? Because that would be fun. I haven't been to a circus in ages. Though, to tell, tell you the truth, at circuses, there are a few of them that I think would be okay, but the majority do not treat their animals well, so. 
I'd mo I'd much prefer actually when I, I'd much prefer a carnival. Just rides and such. I don't know about y'all. Like before I go to a zoo, I actually want to make sure that the zoo's on the up and up. Like that little background music too. Now, I guess we'll be able to eventually go to all of these areas that are locked, which is awesome. I'll tell you the truth, in terms of this, like looking for clues, it'd be really cool if we got a Sherlock Holmes game like this. Being able to travel through, I seem, it seems like we'd be able to get more done. Or not more done, but absorb into the world a little bit more. And I love me those Frogware Sherlock Holmes games. Looks like we nothing really of interest to us, at least currently. Hmm. Let's head to the residence then. Um, which is Follow the Red. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to snap your fingers and know exactly where you want to go? Oh, poor uncle. His lumbago is affecting him. And here we are. The tenement house. They were waiting for me, too. That was nice. Miss, your guests have arrived. The lawyer's upstairs, too, waiting. But try for jittery. Wonder if the tea I made him was too strong. Thank you, Grajana, dear. Let the guests wait. First, I want to take care of the will. I'll just wet my whistle and join you all upstairs. Make sure Uncle makes it upstairs sober. And I'll suggest you don't dawdle either. But I like dawdling. Master Victor, good God! Half your face covered, but I could tell right away it was you. You look just like your father in his youth. Completely his spitting image. Should I make you some cocoa, Master? It would warm you up a little. Make an extra creamy one for Ligia. Oh, I won't skimp on her. Now, your sister's putting a brave face on all this, but she's really having a hard time. It's lovely to see you again. But that's enough jabber for now. I've got the guests and the cocoa, and I've got to whip up some food for you all later. We'll talk soon. Everyone needs someone like her in their life. Go to your father's study for the reading of the will. Okay, we got a garden where we will dawdle. Father's portrait. The portrait depicts father in his twilight years, the serious expression on his face, the proud posture and the grimoire in his hand combined with the dark background and lack of embellishments. It all reflects the strictness and pragmatism he always had. Good old Stanislav. However, a faint red streak can be seen around his figure. Apparently, artists are particularly sensitive to seeing things that usually escape the human eye. This one should have received double a moment, or a moment, for capturing the thaumaturgic aura. Died in his sleep, huh? Okay, looks like we can actually have a conversation with that guy. The Warsaw Courier Evening Extra. Here's the latest news on the riots that disrupted His Majesty Emperor Nikolai II's speech today. The moment after our gracious emperor announced uh, Georgi Skalan as the new governor general of Warsaw, a group of troublemakers started yelling the most disgraceful slogans. Despite reinforced security, there was a scuffle. Uh, they were quick to get the situation under control, however. A few people were injured, including two policemen who came to help. Thirty people charged with public nuisance and brawling were taken into custody. To the, there's a basement. Uh, 365 dinner recipes, 
for five this. Clean and pluck the capone while warm. Burn off the remaining feathers and knots over the fire. Slice off the giblets to add them to the broth. Rinse, salt throughout, and roast on a spit while coating with butter. When finishing roasting, put a large spoonful of sausage butter inside. Sprinkle the top with breadcrumbs, douse in liquid butter, and fry in the pan. If you don't have sausages, a piece of butter with pepper will do. You can also put the sausage butter in the capone once it's... Are you sure he didn't die of, like, a heart attack in his sleep? That sounds amazing, though. Good way to go. Um, I've had a little bit of Polish cooking, and that of what I had has been excellent. So, a uh, liquor recipe. Pour a pot of ripe, duly packed quince fruits into a four gallon demijohn and pour in a light cooled syrup with six pounds of sugar and two gallons of water. Add 10 pieces of amber, stir perfectly, and add half a gallon of your best spirit. Seal in place in a moderately warm place out of the sun for 10 days, stirring several times per day, shaking the demijohn. After 10 to 12 days, when the clumps have sunk and the liquid is completely clear, pour in the bottles, cork tightly, and keep in a cool, dry cellar. That reminds me, in LARP, we used to have um, some friends of mine would create this thing called Saracen Salad which was a ton of rum and stuff and this concoction. There was like a secret recipe and it was, they threw a bunch of fruit in it and then they would seal it for a time until that alcohol just absorbed, got absorbed into the fruit and uh, it was potent, boy. Woo, good stuff. Let's talk to uncle. Uh, I'm glad you're here. I thought I'd have to drink alone. So many goodies laid out for the guests. Having trouble picking something for yourself, Judge? But this was Stasio's. It was special. Amber liqueur with quinces. I think you mean quince liqueur with amber, right? If it's not here, I'm sure it's in the basement. But I won't grope around down there in the dark now. I've got my hands full. Now, I don't want to trouble you either. Victor, could you track down a little bottle for your uncle? I suppose I'm obligated to accept this mission. <laughs> Good lad. A nephew like you is a treasure. We've been given a mission from the judge. Okay, now, who are you? I don't want to put my foot in my mouth again. I already failed to recognize someone once today, but you look familiar. Well, I should think so. I was the victim of one of your starling hunts. Voronins must not be very memorable, cousin. Pietia, forgive me, and for shooting you as well. <laughs> uh, what were you doing? Just some heart problems, not a subject for today. I'm sorry about Uncle Stanislav. Forgive me for not coming to the funeral. I can't bear cemeteries. We'll have to meet up again. Goodbye. That is like one of the best, like you have those Eastern European and Russian stereotypes <laughs> right there. Oh, my, I for you know, please forgive me and for shooting you as well. <laughs> okay. Oh. Bust of Morana. The stern countenance resembles that of a human, but the callous gaze shows no trace of human motions. The Queen of Winter scrutinizes you, sending a shiver down your spine. It makes me think of the words, if you gaze long enough into the abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. Remember what Lovecraft said, ladies and gentlemen, never summon anything that you do not have the ability to send back. Okay, we'll check out the garden after we're done with the basement. Head here into the dark. Yeah. Mother's Portrait A portrait of mother from her youth She stands proud, wearing a white dress, dress and silk scarf thrown over her exposed shoulders Her long dark hair flows down her back and she glances at the viewer with a piercing smile Bare skin and a frivolous hairstyle That's not how I remembered her Nadia is a young, unkempt maiden It's hard to believe The shocking vision of the painter must have been created in a previous era a time when hearts were stirred with violent emotions. Poems were created to the sound of a storm. Love stories had to end tragically, etc., etc. 
father actually commission such a painting? Ooh. A small bottle of quince liquor with amber, a beverage for true connoisseurs. The bottle exudes the sweet aroma of quince and the sincere joy of an upcoming meeting. It's a beverage that brings people together and sweetens the bitterness of everyday life. An element of a ritual that two old friends would eagerly indulge in. Okay. Uh, Savignon de Bordeaux. A bottle of white wine from southern France. An expensive beverage popular among the aristocracy. The wine carries the aroma of peaches, apples, and a certain amount of conviction that a relationship between two people is beginning to take on a romantic edge. A beverage enjoyed by the upper crust, given to a man by a woman. Maybe uncle and, uh... What's her name? Pinot Noir, from Oregon. A bottle of red wine from the United States. Hard to get. An inability to articulate, brought on by a great surprise, clings to the bottle. It was difficult to mouth even a word of gratitude for the unique gift. Words got stuck in the throat, despite the adoration for this particular liquor. It is a favorite beverage, but an unwelcome gift. No. Ronin's bottle. Every bottle found in the uh, cellar contains a credible beverage. Uncle Ronin wouldn't disregard any of them. Alright, well, pick your poison. How did it go? Mission accomplished? Part of knowledge or context required to give. Well, we've got the white wine, the red wine. Let's go ahead and give him the liquor. I think this is the one Uncle wanted. Yes. This is our little funeral battle. We would meet in Stasha's study after every funeral we went to and raised a toast to the dead. And recently, we've been seeing one another more and more at such events. More and more. But this time, even he has left me. So, to an easy death, as Stasha and I used to say. <laughs> How did he die? Hasn't Ligia told you? I haven't even had the chance to ask. He didn't suffer. But such images in the memory are better saved for later. I'd prefer to remember him as he was alive. What then? Am I drinking alone? Hmm. I suppose there's no reason to bear grudges or be angry, is there? Pistachio? To an easy death. Familiar faces keep vanishing from my life. Stasio and my Helena before him. I miss my little darling. I miss them both. Well, obligation fulfilled. Shall we get to the reading of the will? I like to think that Victor's like playing the caretaker here, you know, just like, let's just, I know I've got my own feelings about this, but. At the funeral, there was this sad Jewish fellow, Mordechai Hayat. Do you know him, uncle? He worked for Stanislav, but that was a long time ago. I don't know him more than that. So, shall we collect our inheritance? You'll all have to wait for me a moment yet. All right, but hurry up. Let's we'll see what's going on in the garden. We have some liquor. I mean, liquor is not alcohol. It's more of a tincture, in fact, a medicine. And since life is the most common fatal disease, well, to our health then. Ah, oh, what a good sketch of Uncle here. Everything else is good. 
Everyone taken care of? Fed? What's going on here in the garden? There are kids playing in the rain. That is how sickness happens. Nothing out here. Maybe we'll have to come back later for that. First floor. Oh, we can explore so much more. Serious photo. Straight backs, stern expressions, noses in the air. Two boys that are just trying to meet everyone's expectations. Something went wrong here. I don't know if those are stern expressions necessarily. We can get changed? Ew. We do not have any additional costumes yet. Garments. A bust of Siren. Sharp avian features bear a wild, disturbing kind of beauty. They make you want to fall into her clutches and be lulled into the eternal dream by her sweet song. Yet her cryptic, slight smile makes a subconscious, primal part of your being cower away from the predator. But isn't a soul the only fair price for the bliss of giving yourself up to that enchanting creature? Okay, that way gives me more house to explore. Message from Mother. Dear child, stop. It is with great sorrow that I have received the news of Stanislav's death. Stop. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend the funeral ceremony. Stop. My duties in Paris keep me from traveling to Warsaw at this time. Stop. I join you both in mourning and sorrow. Stop. Mama. Duties in Paris. Hmm. So things are tense there. Um... Adrenaline increases inflicted damage by 50%. Restores four of your health points for every enemy in the suffering state. Each subsequent action that restores health points will restore less of it. Oh, it takes two now. Interesting. Yeah, we don't have anything else that we can currently work on. So we've got to save up. My letter from Rome, July 1896. Dear sister, I'm writing to you because sleep eludes me. As I wrote before, I have found a suitable candidate. However, I'm still struggling to reach his flaw. I can feel that Paimon is within my reach. I even saw him. Vaguely, but I did. I'll stop here because my nerves prevent me from continuing. W. Yes, I will be careful. Don't think me a fool like father. Polish Gazette Evening Edition. Obituaries. At the cemetery in Montmorency on Sunday, the body of the distinguished writer and citizen, the late uh, Serwernia Duczynska, was laid to rest. A handful of compatriots escorted the coffin amidst the pouring rain. The funeral service was very modest. In accordance with the wishes of the deceased, the sums allocated for wreaths were deposited in the coffers of the Klaudia uh, Potaka Charitable Society. Retired, age 91, age 45, and Stanislav, yeah, entrepreneur, age 63. Warsaw Funeral Company, M. Giska. The company arranges funerals, estimations for the transportation of corpses, a factory warehouse of metal and wooden coffins, warning hats, crepe paper, and a vast selection of items used in the time of mourning. Come on by. My letter from Paris, November 1896. Sister of mine, I feel well enough to write something to you. The doctor also recommended I do so. I'm not alone in my anguish. I share a room with one Reford Morton, whose last name escapes me. They brought him from London, from Dr. Seward's clinic. Oh. Okay. A very interesting case. He spends his days hunting for the moths, cockroaches, ladybugs. Was it... Oh, what was Renfield's... Okay, from Dr. Seward. Moths, cockroaches, ladybugs, and beetles that come here sometimes. He eats them. He says it gives him strength. Strength to wait for the coming of the Lord. But I don't think he means the Savior. 
cannot yet reconstruct all the details after the debacle with Paimon. My mind is still in tatters. Paimon visited me no more than a week ago. I know that's impossible. It probably happened only in my mind, but it was so clear. He, as the King of Hell, with his host of demons, with the shadows of his penitence, called for me to join them. It was so real. I'll stop here. I'm having a hard time gathering my thoughts. W. The blood is the life, Mr. Renfield. Ooh, bathroom reading. Uh, Sado Monarch... Uh, Daemonum. Compared to Crowley's Ars um, Gosia, there are f three fewer demons. Mr. Crowley. No evidence that all demons are salutors. Bathim, a false lead. Pusel, a false lead. Anton, cla uh, Anton LeVay claims to have subjugated Orobas, mere boasting. Uh, Marchusias expected to take on the form of a wolf with the wings of a griffin and the tail of a snake. According to De Plancy, he takes the form of a wild lioness. Interesting observation by Crowley. Demons are unexplored fragments of our minds. However, in appearance, it resembles an ox with wings. A lead for Sabnok? Unknown. So we have, like, notes and stuff on here. Trying to find other salutars, maybe? Let's close some doors, man. We were born in a barn. Okay, we closed that door already. Is it time? Asking if we can start. Not yet. Examine. Family portrait. Our family portrait. I can remember when it was taken. The year was 1884. Ligia and I were nine years old at the, or Ligia and I were nine years old at the time. She was clearly tense, and I remember how Mother admonished her not to smile, not to fidget, and to stand straight. Ligia was to take the cue from her. Mother ab was able to freeze like a statue and sit there, barely breathing, for a couple of hours. I, on the other hand, posing nonchalantly, was always more unrestrained than my sister. I could get away with more. Behind us, our father, the head of the family, one hand resting patronizingly on the back of a chase lounge asserting his ownership, the other holding a grimoire, the black grimoire. Behind father, a shadow, as if a shape was emerging and forming, indicating another presence. That's Balbarith. The family is complete. Ooh. My father's first salutar. Aren't they lovely? Does that... Hold on. Horns. Where is... Yes. Three horns sticking out from a crown. Maybe. Could be that one. Take up the family legacy, perhaps. I am ready, Mr. Shulsky. I only need all of you to be present. Can we start reading your father's will? Um... You know what? Hold on one sec. Patience was never my father's strong suit. But you'll have to arm yourself with a bit more of it. I think this is actually a good place to go ahead and call it an episode, guys. We're able to explore the uh, family dwelling, get a little bit more insight. I mean, it is a nice home, but you can tell it definitely has a bittersweet moments for everyone involved in terms of mourning and just returning. But uh, we'll check out the will at the beginning next time. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And uh, we'll see you for the will reading. Later days, everyone.